Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today to learn the history of Thanksgiving. Throughout this program, we will trace the first Thanksgiving back to three possible times and places, discussing the reasoning for their feast, and of course, what was on the menu. We will then end with a trivia game which you can play at home with your friends or family if you choose. Please note that this is a pre-recorded live event. If you need help or would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A section and the presenter will respond as time allows. Now, on to the history of Thanksgiving. So when and where was the first Thanksgiving? The true history of Thanksgiving is unknown. While there are a lot of theories, no one truly knows how it started. The closest thing we have to the origin of this beloved American holiday comes from a letter written by an English settler named Edward Winslow in 1621. The letter never mentions the word Thanksgiving, but it does describe a week-long harvest celebration that occurred in Plymouth, Massachusetts, including 90 Wampanoag men. In the letter, Winslow states that the purpose of the celebration was to rejoice together after such a successful crop yield. Winslow acknowledges that their crop yield will not always be this plentiful, but at that moment in time, they were so thankful for the overabundance they had. Our harvest being gotten in, our governor sent four men on fowling, that so we might, after a special manner, rejoice together, after we had gathered the fruits of our labors. They four in one day killed as much fowl, as with a little help beside, served the company almost a week, at which time, amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms, many of the Indians coming amongst us, and amongst the rest, the greatest king, Massasoit, with some ninety men, whom for three days we entertained and feasted, and they went out and killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation and bestowed on our governor, and upon the captain and others. And although it be not always so plentiful, as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often wish you partakers of our plenty. Plymouth is generally accepted as the first Thanksgiving. However, some historians argue that the first Thanksgiving actually occurred in Florida in 1565 when a Spanish fleet came ashore and christened the new settlement of St. Augustine. To give thanks for this new settlement, the 800 Spanish settlers shared a festive meal with the native Timucuan people. Other historians argue that, while they believe the first Thanksgiving did indeed take place in Florida, it was actually 40 miles north of St. Augustine, along the St. John's River in present-day Jacksonville, and occurred a year earlier in 1564. They believe this Thanksgiving included French Huguenots who feasted with the Timucuans to celebrate the establishment of Fort Caroline. Regardless of which version of first Thanksgiving you believe is the correct one, they all have one thing in common. Whether it was gratitude for the safe arrival of their ship, gratitude for an attempted settlement, or gratitude for a bountiful harvest, the purpose of these thanksgivings was just that, to give thanks. So what did they eat at these thanksgivings? We'll start with Plymouth. While no menu exists for the Thanksgiving in Plymouth, Winslow noted in his journal that four men had been sent fowling, which is another word for hunting. We also know that turkeys were plentiful in that region, so it's plausible that turkey was eaten at this Thanksgiving, but it's also plausible that they instead ate ducks, geese, or swans. Local vegetables grown by the Wampanoag were also in abundance, so they likely ate onions, beans, lettuce, spinach, cabbage, carrots, and maybe peas. Corn was also likely served, but not in the way we're used to. Rather, it was probably turned into cornmeal or porridge and sweetened with molasses. Fruits indigenous to the region included blueberries, plums, grapes, gooseberries, raspberries, and of course, cranberries. Unlike us though, they likely didn't make pies or tarts with their fruit since their reserve of sugar was depleted by the time they reached land. Interestingly enough, culinary historians believe that much of the meal at Plymouth consisted of seafood, which is often not included in American Thanksgiving. Mussels, in particular, were abundant in New England at the time. The colonists occasionally served mussels with curds, a dairy product with a similar consistency to cottage cheese. Lobsters, bass, clams, and oysters may have also been served. 
Unfortunately, though, for potato lovers, there were no potatoes served, nor did they eat pumpkin pie, though they could have eaten pumpkin or squash with no additives. The food served at the celebration in Florida in 1565 greatly differs from what we eat during Thanksgiving today. The settlers had to make do with whatever provisions were on their boat, so their meal likely consisted of hard biscuits and cosido, a rich garbanzo stew made with pork, garlic, saffron, cabbage, and onion, washed down with red wine. The Timucuan ate what was available to them locally, which could have included alligator, bear, wild turkey, venison, tortoise, and food from the sea, such as turtle, shark, mullet, or sea catfish. They could have also eaten oysters, clams, beans, and squash. While there's no detailed account of the food served at the other possible Thanksgiving in Florida in 1564, the one 40 miles north of this one, the menu was likely very similar. So when did American Thanksgiving first begin? America first called for a national holiday to be instituted to celebrate our victory over the British in the Battle of Saratoga in 1777. Then, in 1789, George Washington again called for a national holiday of thanks to take place on the last Thursday of November to commemorate the end of the Revolutionary War and the ratification of the Constitution. It's also important to note that during the Civil War in the mid-1800s, both the Confederacy and the Union issued Thanksgiving Day proclamations, which is proof that the holiday was likely a well-known tradition at that point in time. Centuries later, Americans have developed their own Thanksgiving traditions and menus, but the heart of the message still remains, and indoors especially, during this trying time in all of our lives. As we celebrate Thanksgiving later this week, whether we will be alone, socially distant from friends or family, or through webcam, we should remember all we have to be thankful for. So I invite you to reflect on 2020, this Thanksgiving holiday, on all the hardships, the loss, and the fear, and find the strength within yourself to turn those into advantages, gains, and confidence that you can bring with you into 2021, where hopefully we can resume our celebrations of abundance. If you were among the first 10 to register for this event, you should have received your Grateful Four Tree Take and Make instructions and supplies by this time. Keeping in mind the examples of gratitude we learned about in this presentation, please go ahead and share this craft with friends and family so you can be reminded of all you have to be grateful for this holiday season. 
Unfortunately, there are no supplies remaining for this take and make. However, if you would like to receive instructions for this craft, please comment with only your first name in the Q&A section, and the instructions will be emailed to the address you provided of registration. Thank you so much for attending this event. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Support public libraries, like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.